everybody and welcome to Cubone, my name is Quinton. Welcome to this week's Helldivers 2 Weekly Recap. Today's episode is for the week of July 17th to July 24th, 2024, and whoo! Boy, we technically have this week three major orders to talk about, as we managed to drive a very significant wedge into the bot forces. And now we're taking another delve into researching Terminids by exterminating any excess we have for Liberty's sake. But before I get into this week's news, I do have one thing I'd like to cover. To begin, a comment from my last video must be addressed from user badwolf2881. The comment reads, I hate Liberty. Super Earth is oppressive, and I hope those cool bots and adorable bugs are able to break free from its tyranny. This is very concerning and shows that dissent can form even within our own ranks. Be on the lookout, Helldivers. With no further adoes, allow us to get on to the news beginning with Wednesday the 17th. As Wednesday began around 5.30 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, we took Martel in the name of goodness and liberty. This also completed the first major order from the previous episode. Success! The Automaton Dominion has been fractured by the mighty assault of freedom. Thanks to the courage and obedience of the Helldivers, a large swath of Automaton-held planets are cut off from Cyberstan, disrupting their supplies and communications. This will significantly impact the defenses on those planets, and it will take the Automaton's time to recover. Until then, and so long as our barrier holds, the cutoff planets are vulnerable to our just liberation. The rest of Wednesday took it a little easier as divers celebrated the victory over the bots. The majority of divers worked on the liberation of Estanu, with almost as many trying to continue our momentum on the bot front by trying to take Charon Prime, getting the planets to 12% and 32% respectively through the day. But the majority of the day saw no other major progress. This lasted until Thursday morning as naturally a new major order began. Briefing. With the automaton forces in disarray, the opportunity has come to liberate the territory the automatons illegally occupy. Time is of the essence. The automaton defenses will recover in short order. We must press the advantage now. Assaults on our defensive line to reconnect their forces are expected. If the line is broken, the automaton defenses will immediately recover and our opportunity will dissipate. We had our best opportunity yet, possibly the last best chance we'll ever get, to deal a massive blow to the bot forces. We were tasked with taking the planets Charon Prime, Charbel 7, and Chopessa 4, driving the wedge further through the bot's territory. As we had already begun on Charon Prime, the planet was at nearly 80% by 4pm Mountain Daylight Time with over 20,000 divers planet side. This continued on through 8pm, with player count rising by nearly 3,000 until we successfully liberated the planet. Unfortunately, around 5.30pm, the cowardly bots tried to distract us with an attack on Mater Bay. And yes, I recognize that the entirety of last episode I called it Mater Bay. I'm German. I know that Mater means mother. I'm just a fool. It's not my fault. An attack on Mater Bay that saw over 12,000 divers come to the system's aid once we'd cleared Charon Prime. Meanwhile, almost 7,000 divers began working on Charbel 7 and with bots unable to reinforce, that already began making progress. While Mater Bay still saw the most players through the first half of Friday, rising to over 11,000, player count continued rising as well before seeing a huge jump past 10,000, up to almost 14,000 as we successfully defended Mater Bay, around 2 p.m. Mount Daylight Time. This allowed Charbel 7 to rise past 50% overnight until two new defenses began Saturday morning. Around 2.30 a.m., both Akamar 4 and a planet from the previous major order, Acer Pass, came under attack. Acer Pass saw the least amount of players, barely breaking 2,500 as the day went on, and Akamar 4 fared about the same, getting 6,000, still not enough to fight off the enemy. Divers instead focused on Charbel 7, driving the weakened bots out with vigor, clearing the system completely by 8 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, with over 17,000 then choosing to join the 3,000 on Chopessa 4 to complete the final planet on the Major Order. By Saturday night, we'd raised Chopessa 4 to nearly 60% with over 9 hours to go. This was worrying because we had almost exactly 9 hours to go until the Major Order ran out. It was going to be a very tight window. Through the night, divers buckled down and around 8 a.m. Sunday morning, liberated Chopessa 4 with minutes to spare on the Major Order. Success! 
In a lightning-fast assault, the Helldivers capitalized fully on the automaton's weakened defenses to liberate much of the territory they stole from us. As our surveyors assess the wreckage of these worlds, they have found heartbreaking environmental devastation. Great mines have been stripped bare of valuable ore that could have become homes for colonists or piccolos for patriotic teens. But the enemy's collectivist greed denies the fruition of these dreams and so many more. The Helldivers brought our galaxy one great stride closer to liberation today. Just Justice has, at least in part, been served. Divers had several hours to revel in our victory once again before another two defenses began, following the fall of Acer Pass and Akamar 4. This time we were tasked with defending two more bot planets, Turing and Wasat, beginning around 12.20 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. With the major order completed, over 16,000 divers pushed the bugs back out of Turing, eventually completing around 2 a.m. the next day. Wasat was not so lucky, only gaining 2,700 divers to defend it. Aside from those, 3,000 and 4,000 divers divers respectively tried to take back Akamar 4 and Acer Pass, with the latter seeing the slightest amount of progress. As Monday began, however, Akamar 4 took the primary slot, with almost 10,000 divers planet side until High Command rang with a new major order. Briefing. Following the Helldivers' inspiringly rapid support of the Terminid Research Initiative, the Ministry of Science has requested a second, much larger research trial. A key finding of the first research phase was that Terminid E710 yield is significantly increased if harvested following periods of extreme duress. In order to determine if there is a relationship between method of extermination and E710 production, the Ministry of Science has requested that the Terminids be exterminated using a variety of means. High Command has authorized a rotating series of augmenting stratagems for the duration of this trial in support of scientific progress. Be advised, terminate aggression and expansion may increase in response to these efforts. This spurred divers on harder, with over 19,000 raising Akamar 4 to 63% by Monday afternoon, and by Monday night all the way to 83.5%, with over 100 million bugs destroyed by the end of the night. Seriously, I feel like a Saturday morning cartoon, the way I have to censor that word, you know, the K word, that I'm not allowed to say. I love YouTube. Our push for Akamar 4 pays off just before 2 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time with over 22,000 divers at its peak. Our next target became Gecrux by Tuesday morning, quickly gaining nearly 8,000 divers to raise it to 6%. With Gecrux, we'd finally clear the Jin Z sector and could return to reinforcing the Umlau line. Of course, we couldn't ignore the bots. With their forces split, everything to the southwest of our line was ripe for picking. First, though, was the major order, approaching 300 million by Tuesday afternoon and shooting up to 359 million by Tuesday night. High Command wanted bugs under stress, and by liberty we delivered. The charge was still led with Gecrux, with over 22,000 divers raising it over 36%. With no major distractions, we'll have cleared the planet by Thursday. But you'll have to tune into next week's episode to see if we managed to do that, as that is the end of my notes. I hope you enjoyed this week's weekly recap of Helldivers 2. If you enjoy these videos and want to see more of me, I do streams both here and on Twitch every Thursday, Friday, and Sunday, with occasional streams on other days when I'm able to. This Thursday, we'll be continuing the Black Ops Cold War campaign in preparation for Black Ops 6, and on Friday, we're hopefully going to be following through with the Fool's Gold dating simulator played with a couple of my friends doing the voices. And then on Friday, we'll be playing some Black Ops 4 Zombies with the map Ancient Evil. Or maybe nine, we'll see. Either way, if you want to check out the full schedule, not only is there a rough outline on Twitch, but if you go to my Discord link down below, you should be able to find an updated schedule every week there. And with that, remember to be gay and do crimes, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.